Lucille Ball became the most beloved television actress in the 50s, but behind the screens there is a surprisingly disturbing backstory. She faced loss, betrayal, and scandal at every turn right up until the bitter end, and when Lucille Ball dove into romance with Desi Arnaz, she thought it was a fairy tale come true, but it was more like a horror story. However, despite Desi's many sins, nothing could tear these two apart, not even divorce. And 48 hours before Desi's final breath, Lucille called him on the telephone one last time and made an utterly heartbreaking confession. Stick around, because we're going to look at her scandalous relationship with Desi, her most infamous stories from on set, and her groundbreaking work on the show. Now, after starting her modeling career in 1928, Lucille starred in a couple of tiny film roles before making the move to Hollywood. But throughout the 1930s, she had a lot of small and inconsequential film roles. Once the 1940s hit, Lucille Ball boasted a contract with MGM, but it didn't do her much good, because although she still yearned for real celebrity status, it always seemed to slip through her fingers. Her peers dubbed poor Lucille, quote, Queen of the Bees, quote, because of the string of bee movies she appeared in. Her future seemed more uncertain than ever before, but there was at least one thing she held on to with all her might. In 1940, Lucille Ball met her greatest love and collaborator, Desi Arnaz, the very definition of tall, dark, and handsome. Lucille fell head over heels for the Cuban-American actor swiftly and recklessly. They met during the production of Too Many Girls, and from the very first meeting, the chemistry was undeniable. However, their co-stars had their doubts. Here's an interesting set story you may not have heard about Lucille Ball. Everybody on the set of Too Many Girls could tell that Lucille had fallen for Desi, but in the face of her infatuation, they pulled a despicable move. Her co-star, Eddie Bracken, later admitted, quote, It happened so fast, it seemed it wouldn't last. Everybody on set made bets about how long it would last, quote. Now, of course, Lucille and Desi paid no attention to the naysayers, because by the end of the year, Lucille and Desi had eloped. But this was no happily ever after. In fact, this was more like betrayals ever after. Lucille Ball followed her heart, but it led her straight into the lion's den. While charming on the outside, Desi Arnaz hit a disturbing dark side. Only four years after tying the knot, it all came crashing down. Desi was both a drinker and a philanderer, and he'd often arrive home both inebriated and reeking of infidelity. AKA, he was a habitual cheater. So as you would expect, Lucille, at her wit's end, filed for divorce. But then, the unexpected happened, because on the verge of breaking away from Desi, Lucille suddenly changed her mind. Despite her husband's many faults and vices, Lucille decided to stick by him. And as we'll see momentarily, it was a decision that changed the fate of Lucille's career. By the end of the boisterous decade, Lucille finally began climbing out of her perpetual career slump, and that's when she unearthed the role that would define her legacy. In 1948, Lucille Ball played an eccentric housewife on the CBS radio comedy My Favorite Husband. The role suited her perfectly, and it captivated listeners so well, CBS hoped to transform it into a television show. There was just one problem though, Lucille wanted her husband, Desi Arnaz, to play her on-screen husband as well. And let me just say this, the prejudiced entertainment industry has entered the chat because CBS executives took one look at Lucille and her husband and immediately wrote them off. They felt that certain audiences wouldn't approve of an Anglo-American woman married to a Cuban man. But this didn't stop the persistent couple. Lucille and Desi were ready to fight with their talent alone. They formed their own company, Desilu Productions, to create a pilot episode for what would one day become I Love Lucy. They smashed it out of the park with this pilot episode, but frustratingly, CBS still wasn't sold. Lucille and Desi had to prove they were a marketable couple, and so they took their show on the road. Together, they became a touring vaudeville act. Lucille's lovable, offbeat character won over the hearts of all of her audiences, and the tour was an unbelievable success. Finally, CBS gave the go-ahead for I Love Lucy. Now this show may have been Lucille's ticket to the top, but it also provided her with another saving grace. I Love Lucy brought Lucille closer to her husband than ever before. 
Throughout the 40s, their marriage struggled due to the mismatched schedules, extended absences, and Desi's insatiable appetite for other women. Even more heartbreaking, the couple struggled to start a family, with Lucille enduring several devastating miscarriages. So would their new show help patch up their messy marriage? Maybe. I Love Lucy was a promising new chapter for both of them, but right before the filming started, the couple got a surprise of a lifetime. After many personal losses, Lucille discovered that she was pregnant once again. She even filmed the original pilot episode while showing, but the entertainment world had a twisted belief that pregnancy was inappropriate to show on screen, even vulgar. Similarly, an ad agency warned Desi not to feature a pregnant woman, but the controversy didn't end there. Before we get to the controversy, you might be pleased to hear that Lucille and Desi were delighted to welcome their first child, Lucy Arnaz. But this wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Lucille had a disturbing childhood that she hoped her new daughter would never have to experience. You see, when she was only three years old, Lucille's beloved father became terribly ill, and the diagnosis was bleak. Typhoid fever had dug its claws into Henry Durrell Ball, eventually dragging him past the point of no return. At only 27 years old, Lucille's father succumbed to the fever, leaving his family distraught, especially his pregnant wife, Dee Dee. Now after her father's passing, Lucille's mother, Dee Dee, fell into a spiraling depression. That's when her grandparents stepped in to care for her while Dee Dee was focusing on getting better. Lucille Ball vividly remembers one fateful day from her childhood. She, her grandfather, and some other members of her family were out in the backyard to indulge in some target practice. Everything seemed safe. Her grandfather always made sure to practice in an open field, but the pastime took a turn for the sinister when Lucille's eight-year-old neighbor, Warner Erickson, wanted to join in on the fun. Although Lucille's grandfather instructed Erickson to sit down and stay out of the way, an unspeakable accident came to pass. During target practice, Erickson's mother called out for her son to come home. He stood up, and he ran straight into the path of a bullet. Absolute chaos ensued. Lucille watched in horror as a bloody stain blossomed on Erickson's back. But that wasn't all. Lucille can also remember Erickson's mother running out of the house, screaming at the top of her lungs about how they'd shot her son. Although the boy survived, he wound up paralyzed from the waist down, and the Ericsons sued Lucille's grandfather for all he was worth, and they won. Her family lost everything, their savings, and even their home. Talk about a disturbing childhood. Now back to the controversy at hand. After Lucille and Desi welcomed their firstborn child, the second season of their show began, and Lucille got pregnant again. This time, the couple went against the studio's recommendations and wrote the pregnancy into the script. Still, CBS had one ridiculous condition. They weren't allowed to use the word pregnant. So instead, when referring to Lucille's condition, they said expecting. A lot of anxieties revolved around the storyline, but they needn't have worried because it turns out this authenticity was exactly what the audience liked. The birth of Desi Arnaz Jr., Lucille's second child, was dramatic in its own special way. It coincided with the episode, Lucy Goes to the Hospital, with Lucille giving birth on the very same day the episode aired. At that time, the episode broke records. Nearly 72% of American televisions watched the episode. What's even more surprising is that this episode topped the inauguration which aired the following day. Personally and professionally, Lucille Ball had reached the summit. Everything was going her way, or so it seemed. Against all the odds stacked against her, Lucille's weekly sitcom became the number one show in America for four years. But this kind of success came with a price. Behind the scenes, Desi became more burnt out than ever before, pulling 14-hour shifts almost every day. And at home, the couple's fights became more frequent and more intense. They were one of America's most beloved couples, but as the years passed, cracks began to show in their shiny exterior. You see, Lucille and Desi were always mindful of the press. The media was forever ravenous and ready to tear them down from their pedestal. On one memorable occasion, the magazine Confidential published a scandalous article about Desi digging into his womanizing reputation. On one of Lucille's rehearsal days, her publicist came in with the defamatory issue on hand. He had intended to show it to Desi, but Lucille got her paws on it first. 
Lucille told her publicist, I want to read the story, and rushed to her dressing room to devour the article in private. During this time, the entire set was silent, and they were so worried about her reaction. Finally, she appeared, and she broke the tension like a knife. She threw Desi the magazine and just said, Oh hell, I could tell them worse than that. But how long could Lucille go on like this? Despite two decades of marriage, a loving family, and a flourishing career, Desi never quite learned his lesson. Time and time again, he always returned to adultery and drinking. Lucille had seen and heard it all, and by 1960, she couldn't take it anymore. She wanted to file for divorce, but she did it in the most brutal way. Lucille may have loved Desi deeply, but she sure knew how to twist the knife in. She had just celebrated her husband's 43rd birthday and filmed the final episode of the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour. Now was her time to cut ties. The very next day, Lucille filed for divorce, claiming that her marriage was a nightmare. The very opposite of how their relationship was in I Love Lucy. The entire separation seemed painful, but interestingly enough, Lucille's daughter had another story to tell. Because in a 2019 interview with Closer Weekly, Lucille's daughter, Lucy Arnaz, shared her surprising side of the story. She said that her parents' divorce was completely amicable. In fact, it sounded like the split healed their fraught relationship. Quote, it was a fantastic romance that got even more passionate and friendlier after they were not married to each other anymore. Quote, out of the darkness, Lucille and Desi managed to become close friends. However, their story was far from over. The very next year, Lucille stumbled upon a brand new romance with a man 13 years younger than her. His name was Gary Morton, a comic who had never seen an episode of her famous sitcom. She married him and immediately got to work. In fact, she gave Gary the royal treatment. She got him involved in her production company, taught him the ropes, and eventually made him a producer. Everything seemed to be going smoothly for the aging actress. But if Lucille thought she'd escape the worst of her family dramas, she was sadly mistaken. As Lucille watched her son grow up into his teenage years, her protective side switched into full gear. Having worked so hard to keep her private life out of the media, she became worried when 17-year-old Desi Jr. embarked on a scandalous romance with 23-year-old actress Patty Duke. She had her guard up, and for good reason. You see, Patty Duke was all over the place. In addition to dating Lucille's son, she was also seeing two other men. Lucille Ball was completely against the relationship, convinced that Patty had taken advantage of her son's youth and naivety. Moreover, her own reputation was on the line, but this was only the tip of the iceberg because the family drama came to a head when Patty Duke became pregnant. Now Lucille Ball must have been relieved to learn that Patty Duke's child was not her biological grandchild. But despite not being the father, Desi Jr. still nurtured a close relationship with Patty's son, Sean Astin. Alright, let's bring this back around to the infamous Desi Arnaz. At the end of 1986, Lucille Ball's ex-husband and friend Desi Arnaz passed from lung cancer. A lifetime of indulging in Cuban cigars had led him straight to his tragic end. He finally succumbed to his illness, cradled in his daughter's arms. However, there's more to the story of Lucille and Desi than most people know. According to her daughter, Lucille visited Desi during his prolonged illness. On one occasion, they even watched old episodes of their show and reminisced like giddy lovers. Lucy Arnaz later remembered, quote, I just shut the door and let them have their time together. I started them off like two kids on their first date, quote, but that wasn't the most heartbreaking part. Now, Desi's final days were brutal. He struggled to eat and could barely talk. Lucy remembers her mother calling Desi but he was so weak, she had to hold the phone to her father's ear. Distraught and in earnest, Lucille Ball told him, quote, I love you, I love you, Desi, I love you, quote. Their daughter overheard every word and also caught Desi's last words to Lucille. Although Desi was fading fast, he still managed to respond to Lucille. He said, quote, I love you too, honey. Good luck with your show, quote. According to their daughter, Lucille Ball was the very last person Desi Arnaz ever spoke to. He passed only 48 hours after Lucille hung up the phone. This was devastating enough, but did you know, the date of Lucille's last conversation with Desi was also their wedding anniversary, November 30th. It was a fitting and beautiful end to one of the most loving and turbulent relationships in Hollywood history. 
Lucille Ball's legacy will never be forgotten. What was the most interesting part of the Lucille Ball story? Is it her unfortunate childhood, her rocky relationship with Desi Arnaz? Is it her groundbreaking work in the TV industry? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're interested in hearing about more Hollywood legends, secrets, and scandals, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the best, interesting stories.